Hi everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Science. In this episode, I want to teach you about atomic core charge. So let's jump right in. Okay, let's start with the definition and then expand from there. Core charge is the effective nuclear charge experienced by an outer shell electron. All right, let's break that down. What does that mean? Within the nucleus of an atom, there are protons, and those protons have a positive charge. Now, around the nucleus, you have your electrons, and those electrons all have a negative charge. These electrons uh, feel a repulsion with each other. They repel each other because they are all negatively charged. But there is an attractive force between the nucleus and the electrons. Now, that attractive force between the nucleus and the outermost electrons, the valence electrons, is one of the factors that determines how the atom reacts with other atoms. The number of electrons in that valence electron and also how tightly these outer electrons are bound or attracted to this nucleus determines how an atom behaves in terms of reactivity. And so that's the concept I want to explore today. It's the concept of how this nucleus that has positive protons attracts the outer valence electrons and how that determines its reactivity. Let's take another step forward here. In other words, a core charge is an expression of the attractive force experienced by the valence electrons to the core of an atom, which takes into account the shielding effect of core electrons. So let's talk about this shielding effect. Now these inner electrons, which is any electron that is not in the valence shell, not in the outermost shell. Any of these inner electrons shield or have a shielding effect of the attractive force between the nucleus and the outer electrons. The more inner electrons that you have, then the more shielding effect there is. The shielding effect where it diminishes or reduces the attractive force of the positive nucleus and the outermost electrons. The shielding effect is the inner electrons that reduce the attractive force between the nucleus and the outermost electrons. Let's have a look at a few examples now together. Okay, we'll start with a sodium atom. So a sodium atom has 11 protons in its nucleus, or in other words, 11 positive charges. So we start with 11 in our subtraction equation. The next step is to count the number of inner electrons, the number of inner electrons that shield, have that shielding effect uh, between the nucleus and outer electrons. For sodium, there's one, two electrons in the first shell, and then there are eight electrons in a second shell. That gives you a total of 10 inner electrons which have a shielding effect of that attractive force between the nucleus and this singular outermost electron. So our equation looks like 11 positive charges, 11 protons, minus 10 inner shielding electrons which is equal to plus one core charge. So this is suggesting that this nucleus of sodium only has a very weak hold over this outermost electron. And we see this in real life. Sodium on sodium uh, metal or a sodium atom is extremely reactive. Sodium is very keen to kick out this outer electron and get rid of it so that it's left with eight electrons in its valence shell, which makes it a lot more happy, a lot more stable. And what adds to this is the fact that this nucleus doesn't hold on to this outer electron very strongly at all. With a core charge of just plus one, uh, it's a very weak hold 
on that outer electron. So this electron is uh, very free to go off and react with another atom. Let's have a look at another example, chlorine. Chlorine has got uh, more protons in its nucleus. It's got 17 protons, or in other words, 17 positive charges in its nucleus. The next step is to count the inner electrons, which provide that shielding effect. We've got two electrons in the first shell, and we've got eight electrons in the second shell. That means chlorine has got a total of 10 shielding inner electrons. If we do the maths here, we, take, we do 17 positive charges, 17 protons, minus the 10 inner electrons, which have that shielding effect, and that gives you a core charge of plus 7. That's telling you that each of these electrons in the valence shell of chlorine experiences a core charge of plus 7. That's telling you that each of these electrons is held or attracted towards the nucleus much more strongly compared to this sodium atom. Chlorine holds on to its outer electrons much more strongly compared to this sodium atom. And we also see this in real life. Chlorine is very keen to go out and find an electron from somewhere in order to fill its valence electron, sorry, valence shell, so that it has eight electrons in its valence shell. And that also makes it much happier, much more stable. And because this core charge, this nuclear attractive force, is able to hold on to these outer electrons quite strongly, then it's not too keen to get rid of any of its electrons. It's uh, much more likely um, to find an electron from somewhere in order to complete its outer shell, to get to eight electrons in its outer shell, so that it's more stable. Chlorine often finds that electron from sodium, so often sodium will be the one to give up its electron to chlorine. Now when that happens, sodium and chlorine form an ionic bond together, an ionic compound, in the form of sodium chloride, which is NaCl. One of the beautiful parts about chemistry is how after a chemical reaction, or a bond between two different atoms, how dramatically that substance can change. So for example, sodium on its own is a metal that is extremely reactive, explosive even. Chlorine on its own can be a very poisonous gas if breathed in. And yet, when you combine a sodium atom with a chlorine atom, you make sodium chloride, which is ordinary table salt which is all kinds of strange, in my opinion, a sodium metal atom, uh, explosive on its own, chlorine, a very reactive atom as well, poisonous gas if breathed in, stick them together and they make table salt, which is one of the beautiful parts of chemistry. Okay, let's take another step forward here and talk about uh, atomic radius. However, as the size of atoms increases, atomic radius increases, then the effect of core charge is reduced. This is because the core charge must now operate over a greater distance or a greater number of shells. So what this is trying to explain is that as your atom grows, and as the distance between the nucleus and the outermost shell grows, then that attractive force between the nucleus and the valence electrons becomes weaker. So the bigger the atom becomes, the weaker that nuclear attractive force is. And that's because it's operating over a greater distance. So the closer or the smaller the atom is, the less distance that nuclear attractive force has to work. Um, and therefore that allows the nucleus to hold on to those valence electrons more strongly again. Let's do a couple more examples together. So a hydrogen atom has got one proton, one positive charge in the nucleus, 
and it doesn't have inner, any inner shielding electrons. It's only got one electron in its first shell. So this equation is essentially one minus zero, and that gives hydrogen a core charge of plus one. Let's have a look at another example. This time we've got an oxygen atom. An oxygen atom has got eight protons, or eight positive charges in the nucleus. It's got two electrons in the first shell. So these two electrons are providing a shielding effect. And so if we plug that into the equation, that's eight protons minus two shielding inner electrons. And that gives oxygen a core charge of plus six, which is quite a strong attraction. That's saying to you that each of these electrons is being attracted to the nucleus with a core charge of plus six. That means oxygen is holding on to these outer electrons quite tightly. And oxygen is very keen to go out and find two more electrons from its environment in order to complete its outer shell to get to eight electrons in its outer shell. Then it becomes much more stable. And oxygen likes to pair with itself, where two oxygen atoms will share a couple of electrons with each other in order to form a covalent bond. Uh, we have sodium as well. I think we've looked at sodium before, but let's just do it one more time together. Sodium has got 11 protons in the nucleus, or 11 positive charges, and it's got one, two, plus eight electrons in the second shell. That gives it a total of 10 inner electrons that are providing that shielding effect. That means this singular valence electron is experiencing a core charge of plus one, which is quite weak. So this nucleus is not holding onto this outer electron uh, very strongly at all. And so sodium uh, is able to get rid of this outer electron quite easily. And then it's left with eight electrons in its valence shell after it reacts, which makes it much more stable. Let's have a look at atomic radius now. As we move down the periodic table, the atomic radius of atoms grows. And that's not particularly surprising because as you move down the periodic table, the number of shells uh, that the atom has is growing. The atom is getting bigger. However, somewhat counterintuitively, as you move towards the left of the periodic table, the atomic radius also grows. This is somewhat counterintuitive because the left side of the periodic table has got less particles compared to the right side of the periodic table. As you move to the right of the periodic table, the number of protons and electrons and neutrons um, gets bigger. However, because this side of the periodic table has got more protons in the nucleus, it has a stronger attractive force for those valence electrons. So it pulls in those valence electrons more tightly, more closely towards the nucleus. Whereas on the left side of the periodic table, there are not as many protons, and so therefore the attractive force is not as strong on those valence electrons. So the overall size of the atom actually ends up being bigger on the left side of the periodic table compared to the right side of the periodic table. And that's because the nucleus of these atoms can't pull in the valence electrons, that valence shell, as tightly as these atoms over here that have got more protons, more positive charges within that nucleus. If we look at the periodic table with the elements, so sodium and potassium, for example, actually have the same core charge. They have the same core charge. However, because potassium is a larger atom, that nuclear attractive force has to operate over a greater distance. So potassium has a larger atomic radius, and even though it's the same core charge, because potassium is a larger atom, because that force has to operate over a greater distance, then potassium can't hold on to its outer electrons as well as a sodium atom. And that's, that applies uh, for all the elements as we move down the periodic table. Now, that actually wraps up this episode of Science. If you've got some questions, please do come and see me in class. 
or you can write a comment and I'll endeavor to reply. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Science and I'll see you on the next one.